dear friends of Symphonic Brass Music and welcome to an episode where I'm going to show you how I prepared a backing track for my beloved band Arrow. And today I'm going to focus on how I mixed it and how what I did in Pro Tools. And in the next episode I'm going to show you how I set up main stage so that it works. So what we see here is a stripped down version of the song without that much in it. Um, and I'm just going to play you... Uh, the backing track. If you want to listen to the whole song, go on on Tidal or Spotify. I put the link down in the description below. And um, so this is what the backing track now sounds like. I played from the very top, and I'm gonna explain in a second what's that all about. Crazy. One, two, three, four. What you hear at first are these two tracks. And to be honest, I exported them separately. They're just on the same output because Pro Tools is like that and I'm like that. I soloed them and exported them on a separate track. What you hear is on the left side, you have the click track, which is just, yeah, I made the click track as an audio track. That's just the click from Pro Tools as an audio track. And what you see down here is me saying the name of the song in the one, two, three, four, and I actually quantized that to be exactly on time. So what the and these are two separate tracks. So there's the stereo track of all the of all the backing instruments and this. And this stereo track is only going to the drummer's uh, mixer and if someone wants it to uh, in-ear monitoring for guitar, bass, whoever wants it, if someone wants it. And this is just so that the guys know which track we're on and have a count in and don't have to concentrate if they miss something. They're just here three, four, and they know the song starts and it's not confusing and they don't have to count. If they want at some point have something later on like um, bridge, then I would Implementate that in bridge two, three, four, or something like that. Just how they like it. Currently, it's just the name of the song, one, two, three, four, and then the song starts. So, what the drummer hears gets as a click track is this crazy one, two, three, four. And he gets that on separate tracks, so he can um, change the volume on the mixer as it's left and right. So, um, and then the rest is um, the instrumental without everything we have on stage. The intro drums, I want to have it like that, so the drummer is not playing that, but that's actually coming from the backing track, including this the bass synth and, and the siren synth. And then we just said, okay, we want to have the backing vocals in there. Um, and everything else is played by the band. And you actually see some synths are grayed out because I thought I don't need them. And I mixed that while rehearsing. Uh, we had a PA set up. I didn't listen to that with the, with the monitor mix, but I listened to that with a, what I thought is a decent ceramic. So I set up my my live mixing board, my, my uh, Yamaha O2B 96. We had a rehearsal in here. Everything was cranked pretty loud so that the drums aren't um, overloading everything. And I just made a, made a sort of a PA mix and mixed the backing track um, while they were rehearsing. So I was part of the rehearsal because I had to, to figure that out. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And I did this with every track and there are some stuff just blended out and stuff that is in. Some some songs we don't have vocals at all. Some songs we, we just have the synthesized, chopped, whatever vocals. And some songs are like this. These are just decisions I made on what I want to have on the backing track to enhance the song. Because on stage, we don't want to be the poppy-ish band like 
it is on the records, you wanted to have a rock band, but with all the essentials from the record so that you don't miss anything. I hope you understand what I mean. So for example, the bridge part is like that. And she's singing over it. There, there are guitars playing, she's singing over it. Um, oh, it's not playing, it's bass and drums. It's just, just coming in the low. And that's the chorus. So, there you go. Fairly simple. And then I just exported it separately. So I muted these two channels, exported everything as crazy backing, then soloed these two channels and exported them as um, crazy click something. And then put them over to main stage and that's a new episode. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you like that type of things, I, I want to do a bit more tutorial-ish things, but um, I try my very best. Um, if you want to see more of this, hit that subscribe button, um, leave a like, and if you have any particular questions about audio engineering or uh, the life as an audio engineer, just uh, leave a comment down below. Thanks very, very much for watching. See you soon. Bye. Bye.